Welcome to Libby's Leadership Lab. I'm Libby Gill, and I'm here to help you level up your leadership skills so you can create the professional life you really want without sacrificing your personal life. I've been guiding women executives and entrepreneurs for more than 30 years. First, as a C-suite corporate exec, heading communications at three major Hollywood studios, and now as a business owner and leadership coach. So let's get started. It's time to invent your future. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Leadership Lab. I'm so glad you're here today because I have a question for you. Have you ever been asked how you can be more influential or how do you influence across your peers, even though you don't have direct authority or leadership over them? It's pretty tricky, isn't it, to be influential without necessarily having that sort of um, hierarchical structure where people have to report to you that you direct them. So we're gonna find out how you develop and how you learn how to be more influential, which I think is an essential topic. And I want to welcome my colleague, Divya Parekh. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me, Libby. And what a great topic. I love I, I, influence. I think it's so important, particularly for women who sometimes get dinged for not being strategic enough <laughs> or influential enough without ever being told what that means. But before we dive into that topic, can you share, you've had a long and varied career like I have. So can you give us in a nutshell, uh, what you do and a bit about your background so people can really get that context that you know what you're talking about. You wrote the book, in fact, on influence. <laughs> yes, I did write the book and uh, I'll just give a thumbnail version. Started out in science career, being in academia, teaching chemistry, biochemistry, and I love biochemistry because it tells you how our brains work, how our emotions playing. There's a, something happens, there's a trigger, and then all of a sudden there is that whole physiological loop. From there, I moved into biopharmaceuticals, growing my career laterally, learning from running multi-million dollar projects to leading teams, to working in trenches, to sitting into boardrooms, to drawing up contracts and working with clients, learned a lot. Yeah, I bet. And from, <laughs> from there, I moved into coaching, which is that, very... That's a big leap. So what got you, and I made the same kind of leap from entertainment into coaching. So what was that impetus that said, okay, I've done this, I've done the science side of my career. Now I'm going to be an executive business coach. It was 2008, and just like economy had impacted practically every segment of industry yeah. and market, ours was not untouched either. And just seeing, and I totally understand, companies are not there to make profits. <laughs> no, sorry, companies are there to make there profits. To make <laughs> <laughs> Those would be the nonprofits. Right. That would be nonprofit, <laughs> and for me. You know, these are people that I'd worked with day in and day out who had become my family. They were just walked off at a moment's notice. I mean, of course, that rumor mill was going around, you know, and those rumor mills can be extremely powerful. Oh, yeah, they're going to be layoffs. They're going to be layoffs. And there comes a day when it really happens in people's life in one little cardboard box. And yeah. I was like, mm, couldn't we do something? Couldn't we all, each and every one of us, give our one month salary? Could you? Uh, the shareholders share a little bit of their profits. Could everybody from top to bottom go ahead and <laughs> give Didn't something happen, so we could right? keep everyone? Yeah. And that's my utopia. Got it. So I wanted to create my own utopia where I could hire people. And I am very, how should I say, grateful to say that we have several folks in our family that we work together with. And the whole idea was to work directly one-on-one -on -one people. I was very gratified in the job I was doing, having been part and instrumental in bringing several life-saving medications to market. Right. I just wanted to expand and get in this career. 
I, I, I get it. That makes perfect sense. And I, I'd like to think in, in the, the year we've been in now, that maybe we've learned a little bit from that 28, 2010, because I do see people donating back some of their salary to keep people on board, um, g- sharing jobs, doing things to keep people employed. And I think that's, if we've learned anything, I hope we have learned to be more empathetic as, as leaders and as team members. But t- tell me what the word leadership, if you could sum it up in a sentence or two, what, what is leadership? What does it mean to be a great leader? Mm. A great leader is someone who leads by example. And I want to take leadership one step further. So leadership is leadership. And the soul of leadership is influence. Yeah. And to me, an influencer is a rising tide that lifts all boats. Okay, you, you perfect segue into uh, my next question, because of course, you wrote a book called Expert to Influencer. And, and obviously, you were first an expert, it's something before you can influence others. But, but tell me what you what that means. What is what is influence? Is it the ability to get people to move, to act? Tell me what you mean by influence and mm-hmm. why it is so important. As you said, it's the definition or one of the definitions of leadership. So drill down into that a little bit for me. Absolutely. So let's talk about different ways of communication. A lot of people, there's so many leaders out there who still practice authoritarian leadership. And then that can include manipulation, be, be hey, you gotta do this. If you don't do it, it's not going to work to a point that it's not even manipulation. It gets borderline control to an extent where, okay, it's my way or highway. If I'm not doing it, maybe you're not going to get a promotion or maybe you might start looking for another job. So it's the this old command and control kind of yes. do, do what I say. Right. Okay, and, and yeah. how are you seeing that changing? And what does influence have to do with that style? So as you expect, communication is good. So we have to take a look at that communication happens between two people. Now it can be either two people or it can be an expert and their tribe or it can be an influencer and people in their sphere of influence. It can be one-to-one or one-to-many. So when you're doing persuasion, what happens is that both the parties are involved. It's really good way both parties come to the table and then look at it. And maybe one person may be a little hesitant. The other person puts across a solution that's in favor of the listener and listener may say, okay, I have a stake in it. I've got room where I can negotiate about it. And then you're able to persuade the other person to come around to your way of thinking. Now we go to the last of the spectrum, which is influence. In influence, you're leading by example. When you talked about leadership, to me, leadership is living by example. And when you live by example, you're not telling someone, you got to do this. So I'm just going to share a couple of stories from my experience. I was working with one gentleman, excellent guy. He was a VP and uh, doing phenomenal work. His people were happy. And yet what was happening was that any ideas he put out, they would not get traction versus there were other people who were not as good leaders but were getting traction. And then we started looking at it that, okay, what happens here? So what was happening was that even though he was a leader, but how good of a leader he was, it was not out there. So he was not able to influence people. So influence is not only just living by example. It's also about communicating to other people that, okay, this is happening. Getting that visibility, whether you're working inside the company, whether you're taking your brand as a CEO and communicating with your market shareholders, your employees, or whether you're professional. It's about people getting to know you and sharing it in a way which is elegant and graceful. So you take that risk to be out there with your opinions and your decisions and your thoughts. You can't just be leading from a little silo of your own. Is that Mm -hmm. what you're saying? Yes. And it's about uh, collaboration, forming those meaningful relationships. So what happens is that the influence, what it becomes is as people get to know you, trust you, then even when you're not in the room, people are going to speak for you. An opportunity comes up. 
And that's exactly what happened with my uh, gentleman, BP guy. He said, Divya, I just can go and blow it out there. I said, okay, then create a tribe, create your own sphere of influence. So he started collaborating with people mm. who he had done a lot of work for. And then they started recognizing him and started seeing him in a different way. So which again comes back to positioning. So influence is just not living your life by example, just not broadcasting, but it's about how you want to position yourself. And always it has to come from a two points, a place of integrity and intention to serve others. Yeah, I can see this This yes. falls into my old career, which was branding <laughs> and executive branding, executives, uh, organization. And it really is about uh, the willingness to bring your ideas forward, to take those risks, to, um, and, but I can see how this would work well for introverted leaders, for people who haven't quite, quite claimed their power yet to build those collaborations with people. It's not like, I've got to go, go do a town hall and talk to a thousand people in order to be influential, but that one at a time, you're building that sphere. As you said, you're building your tribe around you. Mm -hmm. um, that's really a great, that's a great solution for people who feel, I think, who are, who are not quite there yet in terms of, oh, I can influence the entire board. I can influence the entire company, <laughs> but I can go out one person at a time, as you said, with an intention to serve and in integrity. So what else, are there any other ways that you have guided like that VP? And I'm thinking particularly of women because I think we are hesitant sometimes to have our voices heard, to show up in a powerful way. So what other tools or, or advice do you have for people to become more influential and to become more comfortable at using their influence? Absolutely, let's talk about something that people can use right away. So going back to the VP story, he found that when he was not in room, he was able to have his people who got his back and were talking about him. So as far as women is concerned, one of the things I'm going to encourage our fellow leaders to do is to create that big boy circle. Oh. And, <laughs> and yes, a lot of women are doing that. Things have changed, things have improved. And yet start out, simple things. Let's say you have a good relationship with someone. Don't wait for somebody to start touting your things. Start touting their things. And the key is, again, coming back from a place of integrity. Do those values align with your values? Just don't go because you want to increase your influence. Right. Because one of the simple things I'll share is that when you speak your truth and when you believe in what you're doing, it shows. Yeah. Going back to mirror neurons, other people will recognize it without you sharing so let's say you're at the table. One of the simple things to do is don't sit on the back seat. Come to the table. And you mean that literally, I bet. Literally. So do yes. I. Yeah. And, and sometimes, let's say if you're leading the meeting, sit at the head of the table because it says something. These are simple solutions you can put in place. Right. And that doesn't mean you're being disrespectful or not. You're running the project. You own it. Own it. Well, I agree. It, it, we hear always people saying, you earn your place or take your place at the table and and they forget the literal part of it yes don't sit in the back row i i once coached a a, a vice president who had a, a sizable team and she was an introverted leader and it was hard for her to lean into that and i said you know you got to show up and it was a casual company i said quit wearing the sweatshirt and the tennis shoes you can be comfortable but put on a blazer and a pair of flats and sit at the table she felt like a lot of leaders do right at that tipping point, particularly into senior leadership that, oh, if she sat back, her team would shine. And in fact, it robbed her of that level of influence. Do you see that? No. Yeah, absolutely. And so many times, uh, so recently I was speaking to a group of CEOs and one person shared that it's not about her, it's about her team. And I said, you can brand it that way too. So for example, on their website, they don't have her at all. I said, stand there, that CEO with her team, yeah. you can still brand with grace and it doesn't have to be. See, one of the issues that us women have is that I don't want to be assertive because then women are branded. Oh yeah, she's being arrogant. She's being yeah. the B word and being yep. so assertive. Yep. You can 
experience your femininity and still come and still have a voice. So just going to share. So for example, one of my other, she was a senior director and she was outgoing. And what happened with her was opposite of what happened with this gentleman. She was branded as that, oh, she is just going to, you know, rail. she was going to come as this fast express train and mow you down and too aggressive, too, too yeah. Yes, yes. So yeah. She, and so she was referred to me by someone and she came. I said, just listen, be at the table, few simple things, lean in. A lot of us like lean back. Yeah. So what that does is that simple body language, it shows yeah. that you're not interested. Don't fold your arms. Sometimes as a woman also think about it, that if you know that somebody has folded their arms, they're close to you, it could be, they could be cold. Yeah. So I, yeah. be open. Yeah. So it's, it's, these are like simple things. And she started leaning in. And rather than she was under the impression she had to take charge of the meeting from get go. I said, rather than taking charge of the meeting, open it up, let people speak their mind, talk with people ahead of the meeting, have those small meetings and ask them, okay, what is it that you want to accomplish? Especially if you're sitting with a group of directors or a group of uh, senior VPs leaders, right. or senior leaders or site management team, go ahead and ask them. Give yeah. them that five to 10 minutes. And then again, it goes back to human relationship. And she did that. And her <laughs> perception about her changed within a few months that, oh, she puts everybody else. She's the best team player out there. Right. We need to have her on board. So people who were against her started bringing her on projects that, oh, she is going to able to bring everybody to the table and find a consensus that works for everyone. So simple things that you can put into practice. It's so simple. And we all have those blind spots. I think that's the beauty of things like, well, coaching and 360 assessments, because you, mm -hmm. you can get that feedback. But some of those things, you're right, they are elegant, simple solutions that you can just like that immediately employ. I, I often think it's more important to wrap up the meeting than it is to own the meeting. I can be very powerful just to sum up and give the action steps so that everybody leaves the meeting knowing what they're supposed to do as opposed to leaving the meeting only to wait for the next meeting. So that can really um, have that kind of influence as well. Now, Divya, you said something I saw in one of your videos that I thought was really interesting because you it seems like it be, could be counterintuitive, but you said you don't need to reveal all right away. You need to let other people earn your trust. So tell me what you mean by that and how we do that. Absolutely. So, so many times what happens is people will come and say, oh, authentic means sharing all my dirty laundry. <laughs> right, right. That's so me. It's about, yeah, warts and all. Yeah. <laughs> and it's about, so for example, let's say you are having a bad day at your home. Something happened between you and your husband and you may be down. So you don't have to go and share exactly because what happens is that corporate is different from entrepreneurial yeah. world. Oh, she's under stress. There goes the label is written. You can say that something happened at home and I have been hit hard by it. I'm working through it. So just by putting it, it's, it's so much into that brand communication yeah. is that, okay, things are happening. I'm acknowledging I'm down. I'm being very transparent about it. And I'm also showing that I'm working through it. Yeah. So in those three sentences, you are able to share. So what I mean is that on that trust is that I have seen this happen in person. I, as I've coached thousands of people across different continents, it doesn't matter what country you're in, people are people. People will go and take other people's ideas. People will go and backstab. Yeah. So to own their trust, it's important that you are transparent and yet knowing that fine line that where you are just kind of handing somebody over a platter where people can take advantage of you and knock you down right versus building that earned trust and relationship where they show that they've got your back so it's transparency minus the too much information or tmi as we call it <laughs> Stopping short of that. And I know certainly for junior people that that want to spill their guts and tell all, it can make senior leaders kind of think, oh, if this is what I'm getting, what is this person saying to the rest of the team or to the outside clients? It makes you a little wary of their judgment level 
if they are oversharers and you get too much of that. Although, as you said, it's a balance. So right now we've had so many people dealing with homeschooling kids or having a family member who's ill. And so some of that has to come in, but you're right. Having, having the, we've got it under control or we're working through it, or we've got help and support is really an important part of it. Cause- uh, And if I may add to that Libby. Yeah. So for example, we were having, I was a, uh, teaching resilience to one of the local companies. And we were there almost 20 people. And I just opened up that share what you got to share. And then I'm going to share with you what not to share, what to share. So somebody said, I'm having tough time homeschooling. And this person said, are you guys having tough time? And what are you implementing that could help all of us? So here it is, she's sharing it. And then the second person she took 10, 15 minutes. And this was an hour that I had requested before the actual right. um, session coaching, group coaching session started. And she took 15 minutes and I could see people were like, okay. Too much. Right. Too much. And we are facing that too. So here's the thing. You can share without whining, without complaining, without sounding that you are the only person in the world. And that's the boundary I'm talking about, that when you go from I to that, okay, nobody else exists, then that becomes too much information. Now it's another different, like you are out for a team lunch right? and you're having, you know, it's, it's a holiday lunch and now everybody's sharing that, hey, this is what I went through. So it's about the time appropriateness and who you're talking to. It's not about hiding anything. It's not about suppressing anything or shoving things under the rug. It's still about being transparent. It's still about being your authentic self, being your bold self, taking those moves. It's just finding that balance and saying appropriate things. Right, right. Makes perfect sense. Now, Divya, as you know, in the, in the leadership lab, I love to experiment and give people uh, a little bit of a challenge, some homework, a risk to take. Do you have a leadership experiment or action step you can share with our listeners today? Absolutely. So folks, for next few weeks, I'm going to invite you to watch yourself. How are you showing up in different situations? Because when I talk about building influences, it's about becoming the person you want to be. It's about being. So you don't have to think twice. You don't have to think about it. So just see that, okay, if you are sitting on a Zoom call with your family members, sometimes, you know, now people are having wine, dinners from across different states. I just kind of like relaxed and how you're showing up there. And then if you're sitting with the corporate people, like, are you so tough? And you're not, you're donning a mask. Because what that does is it's going to start building that barriers. If you want to influence people, you got to start finding that balance. So yes, with your family, you can be totally yourself. So bring a little relaxed from there and put it into the mix. So that's just one simple thing. And another thing I would definitely ask to is seeing your body language. That against some person, are you just kind of like sitting tight or leaning back or when you're sitting in a meeting because a lot of people are going to work in place, are your feet pointing to the door? That means you're ready to leave the room. <laughs> Simple thing. So just watch your body language. And one of the things I'm going to invite is that anytime you're tense or anytime you're going into a meeting, take five breaths, mm -hmm. breathing in through your nose and breathing out, exhaling from your mouth. Because what that does is it will readjust your brain really fast. It's a quick thing, 10 to 15 seconds. Another thing is yawning. Just a mindful yawn or a head roll. Anything fine, that 20 second, right. 20 second that grounds you because then that's going to bring your focus back. And always remember, energy goes where focus goes. I love that. Thank you so much, Divya. These are, these are so actionable. They're so simple and they're so important. So now where do we find out more about you and all the amazing things you're doing for your clients and your community? You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Amazon. <laughs> and there you are, expert to influencer. And I'm and... going to spell your name. It's also going to be in the show notes. So for anybody that's listening, but not reading the show notes, it's 
D I V Y A P A R E K H. And it's Divya Parikh. And we're going to put all of that, your book and everything in the show notes. And thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. And everybody out there, thanks for being with us. I hope you've learned some really important, not just concepts, but some great takeaways you can implement on your next Zoom call, in fact. Stay tuned. That's a wrap for today. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for having me. And folks, I wish you the best of 2021. Take care. Thanks so much, Divya. Bye-bye, everybody.